Hey friends, I hope you're doing well. Brother Wayne Kramer passed away yesterday and I wanted to say a few words about it. I actually knew Wayne a little bit and wanted to share some personal stories. If you clicked on this video, you, I'm sure you know who Wayne Kramer was. Um, from the MC5, you know, all the way to his film scoring. Um, it's rock and roll royalty to a lot of people and I feel that way, but um, I wanted to just share some personal stories about getting to be around him. The first time I ever met Wayne, I was on tour in England and I had a couple off days and Billy Bragg um, sent me an email and invited me to a party in Camden, area of London. And uh, it was a, it was like an event for Jail Guitar Doors, like a private event. And that's a, a benefit that Billy Bragg founded. It was named after a Clash song that was about Wayne Kramer, Jail Guitar Doors. And um, so I went to the party and I just hanging out, just trying to blend in a little bit. And uh, there's one cat that I talked to named Chris who was really, really nice. And I'm um, down to earth, easy going. We're kind of standing around, more about Chris here in a minute, but um, standing around talking and his parties kind of evolve and different people come into different rooms and stuff like that. I end up in this circle and um, there's Billy Bragg, there's Mick Jones from The Clash and there's Wayne Kramer and um, me and my newfound buddy Chris who I later realized was Chris Shiflett from the Foo Fighters. And um, I didn't really know much about the Foo Fighters at all, so I didn't know who Chris was, but he's a beautiful cat. But Wayne Kramer is standing there in front of me with Mick Jones. And there's a part of me that's like the kid from rural Indiana, who's just thinking, how the hell did I end up here? And I loved every bit of it, but they were talking to each other and being really nice to me. And I just kind of mostly listened to them tell, tell stories about back in the day. And Wayne was super, super nice. And Billy's one of the most beautiful cats I've ever met. He's absolutely beautiful. I can't say enough nice things about Billy. But as the years went on, I got invited to be part of some jail guitar door events in the, in the US. It was started in England by Billy and then he asked Wayne to go ahead and kind of lead the charge in the States and the idea behind Jail Guitar Doors, this is my description when I was at these events and I would talk to people. Um, they bring guitars into prisons so that some of the best um, behaved inmates can play guitar. You know, they earn the right to play this guitar and uh, take their mind off of where they're at. And I would say to people when I was describing it, most of the people who are in prison right now are going to move out and, um, and they'll probably you know, live down the street from you. It's in our own best interest that they come out of prison in the, the best state of mind that they can possibly be in. And the wardens like jail guitar doors, but like Wayne was spreading the word about this and he'd ask me to be in them, um, be part of some events. So there was usually around South by Southwest time, they would have parties and I would come and play and be part of it and just hang out and be around Wayne. To say Wayne was smart is a huge understatement. Wayne had a big brain. He was a really, really bright cat and he was great to have conversations with because he could go a lot of places with it. And um, really heartfelt. I could relate to him. He's mi Detroit is Midwestern. There's a plain spokenness about him and look you right in the eye and talk to you passionately about things. Like I was one-on-one -on -one with him and he would just, whatever you wanted to talk about, he was all in, he really seemed to Maybe it's the recovery thing, but he was so into relating and, um, and serving, being of service, I think is how he would phrase it to people. And uh, he just was unbelievably kind and smart and is inspiring to be around. I got to go to a, into a prison with Wayne in Austin, somewhere outside of Austin. And um, 
on behalf of Jail Guitar Doors. And we went in and he asked me to speak to the inmates there. And um, you guys know me, man. I'm always, I'm about preaching love and, you know, just trying to empathy and hope the best I can or whatever. And um, just trying to relate to folks that we can do better than we think we can. And um, it's possible. So I was talking to some inmates, you know, some people that there's like, yeah, I get out in two years or whatever. And and they were saying things like, yeah, I got a kid and I'm this or that. And like, man, you know, you can do this. And it's one thing when I give that thing, it's a heartfelt thing with me and I believe it. There's one thing when it comes from me, but when it comes from Wayne, like when he would speak with these folks and they would know that Wayne did time and um, he was able to get out and turn his life completely around. I mean, completely. So when he would talk about the bad times, it connected with those folks. I mean, really, really connected with those folks. And he would talk about what's possible, you know, and a redemption. He was big on redemption and rehabilitation, where he really, really believed that um, rehabilitation was possible. And it was important that we all embrace the idea of it, mainly because folks are coming out and we want them to, you know, to be in a better place, society altogether. But when he would speak, to, you could see him connecting and you could see people relating. And it's just beautiful. It really is a, I don't know, it's so much different than me with all the best intentions of the world. But it was inspiring to watch Wayne really give of himself to these folks and in this moment, in this situation, and in all kinds of situations across his life. And um, that's not even speaking about what an incredibly talented person Wayne was. He, you know, had this avant-garde, I believe in this idea of an avant-garde working class, where um, we've all had a job you know, where there's somebody who's a dishwasher or something, or somebody who's slinging a hammer, and there's a, then all, you go talking to them, and they start talking about art, and they really know what they're talking about. You know, they'll have uh, these ideas. They just happen to be in this job. Wayne was part of that, I believe, where he had all of these great, uh, when you're thinking of artistic ways of expressing himself, he really dug jazz and he wanted to do something different. He wanted to keep doing something different with music and guitar. And um, I have to believe that the composing for films, you know, movies and TV had to be a great outlet for him with that. But I remember, I should also speak about his kindness. He was just so kind to me in a very real way. And, uh, it felt like an uncle or something that had been there and uh, wanted to give you a pat on the back and say, no, man, it's all right. You know, we're doing this. This is the thing and we're doing it. He had that, uh, that way about him and it was beautiful. I remember uh, at one of these Jail Guitar Doors events in, um, at Lucy's in Austin, uh, when it was over, him and his wife Margaret, who's also absolutely beautiful, beautiful person, and um, was very has been always been very very good to me. But um, they needed a ride back to the hotel, and during South by Southwest, that's a nightmare. Calling a because they flew in, and calling a taxi, it just isn't going to come. You might wait two hours to get an Uber or a taxi or whatever. And I drove there from Nashville, so I had a car. And I'm like, I'll drive you back. It took forever to drive anywhere during South by Southwest, even though it wasn't a very far distance. It took forever, and we had just this really nice conversation in the car, and um, they're so appreciative. Like, oh, this is so nice to, you know, of course I'm gonna give him a ride, get to be in a car and hang out with Wayne Kramer a little bit more and hear more stories, stories about being in Detroit back in the day, Iggy Pop, you know, just all of the great, great rock and roll going on in Detroit. Detroit's given us so much. 
so much. I wish we could give back uh, more. Detroit deserves much from us. But um, anyway, when we got there and dropped him off, just, you know, some folks will just like pause for a nice bit to, just so you know how much they appreciate this small token, uh, you know, that he just, I gave him a ride. You know, but he's like, no, this is really nice and it's very kind of you and I appreciate it and thank you. And um, just went out of his way to make me feel appreciative. And um, I don't know. So I actually was thinking about Wayne. I haven't seen him in six or seven years, something like that. And um, I was thinking about him here um, recently with Detroit, the football team doing well. and. I was thinking of the people in Detroit that I knew that I, and he was, that I would like to see the Lions go to the Super Bowl just for these Detroit people. And um, Wayne was the first one I thought of. But um, anyway, I just wanted to spread a little bit of love and appreciation for Brother Wayne Kramer. If you guys are fans of Wayne, if you dug the MC5, anything, tell me down below. I have no idea how many of my subscribers know about Wayne or care and jail guitar doors is well worth looking up and the whole idea is the inmates who are doing their program and um, earning the right could get to sit down and play guitar and uh, a certain amount of time a week just you know a half hour once a week an hour once a week whatever it is but that would bring guitars into the prisons and Wayne truly believed that being able to sit and play guitar, you know, through music, it helped him, you know, change his life, just getting lost in the music again. And I mean, anybody who's ever, if a lot of you guys play, you know how when you're alone and you play guitar and you're just kind of, or whatever instrument, you get lost in it. It's like driving when you've been, you're on your way home and all of a sudden you realize 20, 25 minutes just went by and you weren't thinking about anything. And uh, you're like, where did all that go? You know, where it's, there's that, uh, you get out of your own head and uh, it's, it's a way for these inmates to just get out of their own head and work through some things and get in a better place. You know, I almost forgot to say that Wayne lived in Nashville I believe it was when he got out of prison. I didn't even know that. He told me that. He would talk about Nashville around that time. I don't remember what year it was right off the bat, but I'll bet I have friends who actually ran into him and knew him back then. Just so many people's lives that he's touched. So many. But I have nothing but love and uh, gratitude and I wish healing and all the best to his wife Margaret and his family and friends. and. Uh, Rest easy, Brother Wayne.